welcome tonight to Benny Monroe Stadium on the campus of Cleveland High School on a beautiful night for high school football. Tonight, the Cleveland Blue Raiders host their first home game of the season and welcome the Cookville Cavaliers. The Cavaliers, Cavaliers are coming into tonight's game after an opening game win while the Blue Raiders are still seeking their first win of this young season. Cleveland quarterback Austin Massey has taken over the reins from last year's high-scoring offense by Austin Herrick and looks to lead the Blue Raiders to get back on track tonight. The fans are filing in, the teams are warming up, and we're less than 30 minutes away from the kickoff, and tonight's game ought to be a good one. Other games of interest tonight include Walker Valley at Sequoia and Bradley at Riverdale. So we're glad you've logged on to join us for tonight's telecast on CHS Live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's pregame. My name is Tanya Lovelace, and alongside me are guest football analysis, Stephen Shelton and Greg Phillips. Guys, welcome, and thank you for being with us tonight. So we're going to jump right in. First question of the night, the Blue Raiders got behind early last week um, against a good Macaulay team, and they had to play from behind. It seemed like they couldn't ever get any traction after that. So what can they do this week to get off to a better start against this Cookville team? Well, I think, it, I think it begins up front. I think Greg would agree with me. It all begins up front. Uh, they gave up a lot of yards to McCauley last week, three, uh, 463 yards total offense for McCauley, but 355 of that was on the ground. So uh, they've got to win in the trenches, and it's going to be no different tonight. Uh, the, the Cavaliers come in with an enormous offensive line. Uh, their smallest kid on the offensive line will be as large as Cleveland's largest kid. So it, it's going to be interesting tonight to see uh, how Cleveland kind of bounces back. Uh, and see if they can really buy into Coach Crawford and his staff and, and, and really see if they can come back and, and defeat a, a team that they should um, maybe beat on paper if everyone was healthy, but, but Cavaliers are looking for a, a little bit of revenge from last year with that 36-17 defeat they, they suffered at Cookville last year. I'll definitely echo what, uh, what Stephen said. Uh, the, the big thing that happened last week is McCauley won up front. Just like Stephen said, the, the line of scrimmage wasn't the line of scrimmage. It was about two yards deeper than that. So McCauley wasn't getting touched with a great running back staff, great athletes and everything. So, so Cleveland has got to win the battle up front tonight. They, they have to, and they, they've got to establish that early. They've got to establish the run early, and they've got to try to keep the ball out of Cookville's hands. And I think that's going to be very key to tonight is – time of possession. I think when we look back at the end of this game and we see the time of possession, that's where we're going to decide who won that football game by, the, by that one stat alone, just because they're going to have to win that battle and hold on to the football and keep it out of Cookville's hands. Well, there's no question that the Blue Raiders should be properly motivated for tonight's game. Obviously, it's a home opener in front of a friendly crowd, um, and they don't want to start the season off 0-2. Uh, do you expect them to come out, and we'll go to you, Greg, do you expect them to come out with a lot of intensity, and what do they need to do to set the tone early tonight? Again, I, I hope Cleveland wins the toss and they take the football because, again, like like you said, it's a it's a friendly crowd. This great the route the Ra rowdy Raider Nation, uh, just phenomenal support to the football team, and they they've got to get them behind them tonight. So they need to do something early to get the crowd into it to tr maybe get Cookville off their game. So they need the football first. They need to come out. They need to establish the run. They need to they need to win up front and they need a long drive down the field to score to to get this crowd into it to get, to get Cookville back on their heels and make things happen. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how fast Cleveland gets off. Uh, and they really need need a quick start. They're coming off the second uh, worst his loss in the history of Blue Raider football. Uh, so when you when you get shut out in the home opener against a, a, a in front of a large crowd they had at UTC, it's going to be a, a tough time to see, you know, as a 16, 17, 18 year old kid to see if you can bounce uh, in, in seven days. And, and I think they can. Uh, but if Cookville wins the toss, Cookville takes it down for a quick school, a score like McCauley did. You start thinking, oh, no, here we go again. And, and so uh, Cookville, you know, they're going to have to slow down Cookville's running game. And, and if Cookville does get the ball and they can slow down the running game and they can get the ball back and, and get a little momentum, then I think they'll be fine. But uh, if they don't get up to a quick start, I'm afraid this could be another long night for the Raiders. Well, we hope it's not a long night for the Raiders. Um, I'm sure Coach Crawford has got some uh, question marks when it comes to some positions. Uh, had some injuries to starters and some key players playing some backups without a lot of game experience, a lot of sophomores on the um, special teams, and still trying to get his offense to jail. Uh, what do you guys see as the biggest challenge in getting our Blue Raider offense on track and getting those points on that scoreboard and keeping our defense off the field? 
Well, again, it all starts up front. Uh, they've got to keep the linebackers and the defensive, uh, defensive ends out of the backfield. Last week, McCauley spent as much time in the backfield as the Raiders did. And, and so uh, they've got to get a quick start. They, they have to uh, make sure that they move the football, they, they win in the trenches, and then go from there. I think Cleveland can maybe exploit a little bit with a passing game if they can set up the running game first, throw the football a little bit downfield, because the only thing that Cleveland does have is foot speed. Tonight, they're going to be better in foot speed. They're not going to be bigger. They're not going to be a, as mature. Uh, Cookville returns 100 returning players from last year's team. So that is, that you know, when you when you have that type of experience coming back and you're you're playing f uh, freshman and sophomore in four positions that you, you have starters that are out, it's going to be tough for Coach Crawford. But if they can establish that running game and win in the trenches, take a couple shots downfield and exploit, you know, so, you know some of the Cookville weakness, which is the speed, and, and maybe, get a, maybe get a couple of uh, shots downfield to kind of open the running game up even more, then I think they'll, they'll have something going. For me, I think it starts with Austin Massey. I, th I think t I think tonight we're going to see Cleveland's true offense as well. I think against McCauley, and uh, they tried to throw the ball a lot. And I think what you're going to see with a with a six three, two hundred forty pound quarterback, I think you're going to see Cleveland tonight. I think they hope to wait till next week to open up their true offense. But I think based on last week's loss, they're going to have to show everybody their real offense tonight. So I think what we're going to see is we're going to see Austin Massey lowering his head a lot tonight. And I think that's the key to Cleveland winning this football game is Austin's going to have to be effective running the ball. They struggled throwing the ball. Against McCauley, they had so many three and outs. And what that does is that allows McCauley's defense to, uh, to rest. And Cleveland's, de Cleveland's defense was on the field the entire game. And so we have to get to a point where Cleveland's offense can keep their defense off the field and let them rest. And that starts with Austin and being effective running the football again. That's that's where they're going to be able to win this game is Austin running the football in a power game and then with uh, with Parker you know, coming behind him with the speed and things like that and being effective there. They've got to hold on to the football. They've got to run the football. But like Steven said, to run the football, that starts up front. And they're going to have to – they're going to be outmanned on the offensive line from the standpoint of they're going to be outweighed by a few hundred pounds. They're going to have to establish that line of scrimmage and they're going to have to, they're going to, have to get Cookville on their heels by, by pushing them backwards and that's going to be the key tonight. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how the, the line matches up. As you mentioned earlier, um, and Coach Crawford reiterated in our pregame show this week, um, that our their smallest guy on the line is six foot one, 265, and our biggest guy is 6'1", 265. So it's definitely going to be a challenge on the line. It'll be interesting to see how well they match up and how well they defend them. Um, what do we know? You've already mentioned a few things, but what else do we know about this Cleveland Cavalier team? that's coming in here tonight. I mean, we beat them last year, and I know the challenges with our injuries and, and, and our youth, um, but uh, tell us a little bit more about what we know about them. Well, you, you starts off with Gabe uh, Angel. He is a, a transfer from Wilson Central. He is a 6'3", 215-pound junior running back. He has offers at Tennessee, Alabama, and Vanderbilt. you got to stop him. Another transfer from actually Wilson Central again, Vic Johnson. He ran last uh, last week. He ran for five rushes for 105 yards. Now that was against Monterey. Monterey is a very small Class A school. But again, five rushes for 105 yards. Somebody could have tripped him. So I mean that that's that's really really uh, a tandem running to, to attack that Cleveland has got to shut down. <clears throat> I think Cleveland can take some chances, and, and Greg can maybe a touch on this more. They can take some chances defensively. They can blitz a lot because the Cookville does not want to throw the football. They want to run it, and they want to run it a lot. So I really think that, that Cleveland can maybe blitz and, and blitz and blitz and maybe uh, you know try to take advantage of some of their speed to get in that backfield to, to catch these guys before they get the downhill momentum that they're looking for. But uh, it's, it's stop that Cookville running game because they got two kids that, that could both uh, end up being Division One players. I think Stephen hit most most of the points there, so I'll be real quick on this. I, I think uh, Cleveland is going to have an opportunity. You know, Cleveland is going to have an opportunity to get the ball down the field after they establish the run. And I, I think Cookville would be happy tonight if they didn't throw the ball one time. I think Cookville wants to get behind those big offensive linemen. They want to they want to just pound downhill and they want to get the ball in Angel's hands and run the run the ball. From a passing standpoint, that that's the other thing. You know. They don't throw the ball well at all, and they don't want to throw it. So if we can get them in a situation where they're having to throw the ball, then that's going to be that's going to be good for the Cleveland side. So from a quarterback standpoint, they don't throw it well, but they but they are going to run it, and that's that's what they're going to want to do. So that's I think that's the only thing I'll add to that. Well, I have to ask this. Um, want to get your opinion on who's going to win the game tonight? 
and why and what you think the score is going to be. <laughs> she wants to go to Greg first. Steven? <laughs> now, honestly, this, this is tough. This is going to be a tough game for Cleveland. Cleveland is, you know, like we've said all along, I mean, you've heard we've talked Cookville up a lot, and Cleveland is still trying to find themselves. Cleveland doesn't have an identity at this point, and until Cleveland finds an identity, Cleveland's going to struggle. So I, I think tonight Cleveland's going to work on that identity, but I don't think they're going to find it tonight. So I, I think Cookville's going to win the game tonight, and, and I think I think it's going to be relatively low scoring because I think both teams are going to try to run the football. So I think Cleveland, uh, I think Cookville's going to win 28-24. Wow. Uh, I agree with Greg a lot uh, on what he just said. Uh, not in life, but in what he just said. Uh, but th I really think it's going to be they're going to try to run the football a lot. I think Cleveland's going to try to establish a run. I think Cookville, that's all they want to do is run the football. And I, I really think you can't teach speed. And that's one thing Cleveland has for it. But you can't teach 6'6", 215 pounds, and that's what, their, that's what their tight end is. And so I really think that up front, Cookville can, has the ability to dominate this game. Uh, I, I, I'm going with Cookville 21-7. All right, I mentioned uh, earlier about our key matchups going on uh, with Walker Valley and Bradley. We've got uh, Walker Valley at Sequoia and Bradley at Riverdale. Any predictions on those games? I know Riverdale in the past has always been strong. Uh, I don't know much about Sequoia, but uh, just give us a little insight what you think about those two games. Yeah, I, I think Walker Valley, uh, I think they go 2-0 tonight. I really do. I think Walker Valley wins tonight. Riverdale's down, but when Riverdale's down, it's kind of like saying the New York Yankees are down. How far down are you? And so... Uh, down in Middle Tennessee, and that region is a lot different than being down in a lot of other places. So uh, I, I think Bradley goes over. I think they keep it close, but I think Riverdale will. And so, so I think you got to split on the other two county schools. Uh, as far as Walker Valley and Sequoia, Sequoia was a pretty good football team last year, but Sequoia lost a lot of seniors. Sequoia had a big offensive line last year. Those guys were seniors. Uh, Sequoia is going to be down this year. Um, Sequoia beat Teleco uh, pretty handily, but that was Teleco, and Teleco is not a very good football team. I think Walker Valley is going to go over, and I think Walker Valley is going to beat. Um, I think they're going to beat Sequoia, uh, and I think I think they're going to beat them pretty good because I think uh, I think Walker Valley has a lot of weapons on offense, and their skill their skill position players are going to be the difference makers in that game. From a Bradley standpoint, Bradley's another team. They're bringing in a quarterback that hasn't played a lot he played well last week it was at that game he played well last week but this is at Riverdale this is his first game on the road big difference than being in the confines of your home of your home field home field so that's going to be a tough game for Bradley and, and I think again that game's going to come down to the trenches as well and I think Bradley's going to struggle in the trenches against a, a, a good sized Riverdale team that's over in Middle Tennessee that has great athletes so I think uh, I think Bradley will end up uh, end up one and one after that with with a loss this week well, Greg, Steve, appreciate you guys coming out with us tonight. Hopefully my husband, Alan, will be with you guys next week, and I look forward to our, our next time with you guys.